So let's talk about one of the biggest things that's going to help you grow. Steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, if you want to be a half decent entrepreneur, probably for the last few years, the internet is going to be kind of your best friend, to be honest. Like, I get that not everyone likes putting themselves out there. You don't have to put yourself out there as such. You can put your business brand out there as well. But really, if you are ignoring the internet, I don't know anybody who's made a million pound plus business out of really chapping doors and shit the past few years. The internet is too big to be ignored now at this point. I think both of us probably Yeah, well well that. if you think about it, it's the it's the ultimate hack, isn't it? Because Aye. if you think about it so this is me using my age or showing my age. You know Dying when up I, internet <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy when I talk about that at the, the young entrepreneur events. I turn around and use analogy of dial up modems and having to dial up to get on the internet and people looking at me as if I'm stupid, you know. <laughs> so, I remember dial up. Do, do you actually internet. remember it? Here's a funny fact, right? So see my nana and grandpa's house, they had they had internet because they had a landline, right? Because you, you need to have a you need to have a landline to have internet. So I remember doing it and you would hear it going da, 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 like doing the wee pure tuning in thing. But see the flats we stayed at in Pollock Shields? They were like big poured concrete ones and they hadn't been future proofed in any way. They were built in the 60s but there was no provisions for landlines or internet. So we had a dongle mate. Remember dongles? It was like a USB yeah, stick. dongles never internet. came till much later. I know but my point was we never had actual internet in our house until 2011. Wow. Yeah, I don't actually right. remember the time when we had internet, but it was such a big deal, and everything was just taking a lifetime to load up. It was crazy. But you didn't think it took a lifetime to load up, probably back then. Oh no, I'm talking about in comparison to like nowadays. It's just nuts because back then it was you know you you just go and get your dinner while it's sitting there Aye. loading up, you know, and you come back to it, and then it took forever to write an email and send Won't it and everything else. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Why was it loaded up? But the thing is with social, I remember when Facebook was a thing, and just jumping on that, yeah. and then it was really just where you had some of your family and friends, isn't it? Ah, yeah, you know, it was. and then as a um, a young entrepreneur at the time, someone who wanted to get involved in in business. I found it as a phenomenal platform to get exposure. And what my first entrepreneurial journey, which uh, a lot of people don't know, it wasn't property, yeah. you know. So I quit my job in IT to go and be an events promoter. Right. So oh, is that, do the DJ and shit and all that? Yeah, well, the events promoter, there was two main acts I had. There was a comedian and a hypnotist. So, yeah. So, I don't know why when I went DJ and you went, yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, no, no, because... Nothing to do with DJs. No, because there was, there was a music guy there as well oh, who, who right, did okay. DJing, but um, not a lot happened with that guy. By the way, this was a failed venture. This happened, this lasted no more than six, seven months, you know? So, so what I did, and there's a story behind this in terms of social, but what I did was um, book the venues and I had the acts and then put all together all the promotional kind of stuff and then started to promote it. But back then, the big platform was Bebo. Mate, I, I had Bebo. Do you know Bebo yeah. sold for something like 850 million to, was it Yahoo? Mate, no, Yahoo. it wasn't, it was AOL. I was going to say, because Yahoo, fu you know Yahoo bought Broadcast.com? That's yeah. how Mark Cuban made right, them, okay. became a billionaire. So Yahoo bought Broadcast.com for like call it seven billion and they done like two billion cash the rest in Yahoo stock. Mark Cuban and his mates sold the Yahoo stock the same week and then the dot com bubble burst and Yahoo tanked. Talk about timing. I know mate. Crazy. It's crazy. But AOL bought, they bought over Bebo. Yeah, yeah. What? And and by the way, see the owners of Bebo, it was a it was a, a couple. Once Bebo like failed miserably, uh, they bought it back for, for like like a dollar or something like that, something stupid. Really? Yeah. Mind everyone was re-registering usernames last year. You yeah, know, or was yeah, it yeah. The year no, there was quite a few years ago. <laughs> Time flies, isn't it? Because I registered yeah. at Richard Dixon. Because there was this whole that. talk that it was all going to come back, but I just think that it had its opportunity and it was gone. But, but I use Bebo as my social platform to promote these events That's because, like, sending the, people love so that they would come and. Oh buy yeah, a but the good thing was is that <clears throat> you know, so I went to. So the, the the best place for me to promote those events were, were colleges and universities, you know, so I would go to, because you used to have Bebo rooms, so if you were part of, not like a room, but like you could be connected to, almost. like, for example, a certain college, 
So I could just go and uh, click on the college and see everybody who's who's assigned to that college. Kind of what Facebook was meant to be. Yeah. Like what, so it was so like then so thing. so say we were doing something in like a a, a gig in, in Paisley. I'd go to Reed Care College or the West uh, uh, Scotland University and I'd see everybody that was there and I'd be Ridiculous. DMing them, like, we've got this hypnotist coming up, we've got this comedian coming up. And by the way, I sold quite a few events and I was getting 25% of the ticket sales. And But the problem was the comedian was awful. Was and the hypnotist funny. had the first gig, which was a Kamarnock Palace Theatre, was an outstanding show. It was two nights. It was Friday night, Saturday night. Outstanding shows. And then it all went downhill after that. How? Like what? Like why? I think it was a confidence thing as well, because there was a another event in the Viking Theatre in Largs, and uh, it was such a big theatre, and we had a couple hundred people in there. The thing in the Palace Theatre in Kilmarnock, as an example, um, it's a bit like the Pavilion or anything like that as well. Is like or the is it the armadillo you don't need to hire the whole thing you can the make hydro, it the hydro can put curtains exactly down to make it look so, like so you can make it look really out. busy so you could do that with the palace theater but you couldn't do that in the the, the viking theater in largs so it looked so empty and the hypnotist just it. yeah pretty much and anyway it was a disaster we had to refund everybody and then um anyway so so that was he didn't want to do it again so I found myself in a situation where property was something I was doing along the side, but I just had this appeal to be an entrepreneur, hence why giving it a go. And that's when I found myself, like, I still need to get a bit of an income, I need to get a job, and that's when I found myself back in construction. But anyway, the whole point of that there, when we're talking about social, is that I use Bebo. So that was my first exposure of using social media to get out of my social circles. Mm. Because you think about these days, what, what, what do you do? If you want to build a network, you know, you're, you're, you, you can't. In 2022 and beyond, as we're going to 2023, you can't be stuck to your immediate network because mm -hmm. your immediate network know you for who you are. You might know some people there, but if you limit yourself just to those that you know, like how are you ever going to expand? And this is the thing, and I always say this to you because we have a chat about it in terms of different business ventures we're involved in, is like anyone who starts a business, regardless to what it is, they're always going to get their immediate network as new customers and clients. That's the easy part. That's the yeah. low hanging fruit. And it leads you into a false sense of security. You get a little boost off the yeah, start. Yeah, so that boost is great. Mm -hmm. But what makes an entrepreneur is how do you then evolve after you've exhausted your immediate network? And if your immediate network is small, yeah. then you're gonna exhaust that very quickly, mm -hmm. very, very quickly. So it's like, okay, now we need to get out there to speak to more people. And the best way of doing that is social. It's how can you put out uh, content? How can you add value to your social followers? But more importantly, how can you uh, give them a, a like a insight into who you are? Because people follow people. Mm -hmm. It's not like if you're just promoting things, that's one thing. But if people get to see who you are and what you're up to, like the best example is look at Elon Musk and Tesla. You know, Elon Musk has significantly more followers oh, than Tesla. Richard Branson has significantly more followers than Virgin. Yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. see that across the board. The personal brand, I tend to find, just trumps business brands because it's more interesting to follow the individual. Like, obviously, Elon Musk just now is like an absolute head case, right? And I don't know if you've been seeing some of the shit he's been tweeting, like, since he's bought Twitter. What, what's your thoughts on Twitter now? Like, I had a Twitter account. I still have to. I still have Twitter. Yeah, I had a Twitter account, and uh, I, I don't. I don't use it for anything. Like, what I, I just go on it and yeah, laugh at Twitter. Yeah, videos, like, like it? it's the one social platform that I'm on that the team have always managed. Until at one point, I was like, stop wasting time on it. And my whole mindset was, fuck Twitter. Yeah. Like, it's an absolute waste of time. But I think that the the things that he's, he's proposing just now, because he's talking about long-form video, he's talking about... I love the whole idea about the $8 a month verification thing. Uh -huh. And I think they might start to see other platforms doing that as well. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, ah, well, you lose the appeal if, you, if like everybody can get verified. No, like, forget the ego... Of Aye, being verified. But the point is, is like, see the amount of times that I get fake and you too. Yeah, the amount fake of fake accounts. accounts. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what bothers me with it? Because it's happened today. Oh, today. People sending me messages, screenshotting. Is this you, bro? <laughs> and it's called Brian James FX or something. Do you know what's hilarious? Right, two points. That is hilarious. The other day, someone messaged me. 
bro, what, what the fuck's going on with my money? And like, I sent money <laughs> to that account and you fucking blocked me and all that. And I was like, I miss me. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, I said, what are you talking about? Your fucking head case. That's what I wrote, right? <laughs> the boy's like, I, I sent you that that Bitcoin and he's screenshotting him. I had Bitcoin transfer. I was like, mate, that's a fake account. I mean, I says, it's not. But me, I says, look at it. And he actually calmed down straight away, went, oh, mate, look, I've been done a belter, like, it's clear. But one of my friends, it was a fake account of you, Paul McFadden Wealth, with, but with two L's, yeah. right? That one's been around a while, by the way. Like, that one's I know, been around for I ages. know, th there's so many. That's the mm. annoying thing about these fake accounts. It's probably the same person. Can't get them taken down. Yeah, and they, they just change a letter. And it's so deceiving, you know? They've got all the content saved on the phone already. Yeah. They just upload it, buy some followers. But um, one of my mates decided, like, who doesn't know you, but had obviously known you through me, went, oh, this obviously isn't Paul McFadden, I'm going to ask this guy to get on a phone call with me, right? So he messaged the guy saying, bro, this investment opportunity sounds amazing. If we could get on a phone call, I'd really appreciate it. And the guy's like, yeah, no problem. Like, here's my number. And it's like pure <clears throat> plus seven, eight, like somewhere in the middle of nowhere. He didn't even think to check it. My mate was like, fuck it, I'm just going to phone it. The guy was Jamaican. <laughs> the guy was Jamaican. Oh my That's God. Right, God. And my mate says he's like holding the phone. He's like trying not to laugh. He's like, there's tears around his face. He's like, all right, mate, can you tell me about this crypto platform? He's like this Jamaican guy, mate, pretend to be you. Which I was like, you know what? That is absolutely hilarious. Like that to me, I was like, I couldn't help but kind of nod my head and go, mate, you've got balls the size of fucking watermelons, like, <laughs> trying to pretend you're, like, Paul McFadden. It was, oh, mate, that, I, I think the $8 verification thing, that makes sense. And you were saying $20 at first, not, whatever it is, isn't it? I mean, $8 is $96 a year, right? Yeah. And I understand that for some people, especially with cost of living and blah, 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 like, that's, that's not a good use of money for them. Like, I get that. But for me, I... I like it because there's two schools of thought here, right? Because there's a school of thought with people saying um, that you to be able to register for social media, you should have to register with your ID. For any events of online bullying, you can be traced straight away. I don't think that's fair because you can have displaced people, people in between visas, people who have lost their passport and can't afford to get another one, who are just automatically excluded from social interaction because a lot of social interaction is through, I talk to more people online every day than I talk to in real life, right? So I don't think that's fair, having to have ID to sign up. But I think if you want to verify yourself and be shown that you are the only of that I can show that I am the only Richard Dixon I can prove it because of my ID and a utility bill or whatever and then I think it's a worthwhile cost for me and it would save other people money as well from getting scammed basically um, one of the things about Elon Musk is though that I've seen because I follow him on Twitter I was scrolling through it last night like about midnight or something I just couldn't stop scrolling through his, his Twitter and he tweeted like the day that they completed the deal saying congratulations everyone comedy is now legal on Twitter yeah right but then people, like, <laughs> this is such a side tangent. Elon Musk got done for animal abuse in college. Really? Yeah. Like, I don't know if I can say this. He, like, had sex with a cat. Shut the died. fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. This, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is a whole as different term. an initiation term. thing into... What? I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious, right? And his dad, who's extremely successful... Because um, him and his brother, you know his brother Kimball Musk, he's yep. super, he's a billionaire as well. Um, his dad paid 150 grand to try and cover it up. So people started sharing it on Twitter, going, oh, free speech is legal now. And he started banning all their accounts, right? So then hundreds of other people, like that Ethan Klein that runs that H3H3 podcast, who is an absolute knob, right, but has a big platform, basically changed his changed his profile photo to Elon Musk and changed his account name to Elon Musk, but it was still at H3H3 Productions. And he was posting stuff like, hi, here's a photo of me and um, that Ghislaine Maxwell, and here's me and Jeffrey Epstein and all that, like, having a great time. I don't think they should have been tried as sex offenders. Not just, like, basically ripping See, the piss yeah. out of him. So Elon Musk then posted saying, anyone who creates an account of me, or who creates a fake account that does not clearly state parody, will be banned. So then Ethan Klein put parody in his account and kept doing it, and then he's still banning everyone. So he's kind of going against exactly what he's meant to be there. Apparently, um, I can't remember who it was, but some m and &E giant valued Twitter independently without being asked, just out of curiosity. They said that they thought it was actually only worth 10 billion, 
Elon Musk paid forty four for it. Yeah, I think the way that Elon's talking about is that when you it was a good interview the other day there actually that I, I watched, and he definitely says he's overpaid for it. Like there's no question, and it's quite funny because he he jokes and says, "Well, I tried to get out of it," you know, which was was quite funny I think. And but he believes in what it can be, so he owns another company which um, God I, I can't remember what it's called, but it could rival PayPal, which obviously was his original company, and oh, yeah. he he couldn't believe that his kind of processor that could that he believes is better than PayPal has not been adopted anywhere else. So he's going to be using that in the Twitter, Twitter. platform mm-hmm. as well as you know a a, a bunch of other. Um, algorithms that he is aware of that tesla utilize that he can bring over so i think he sees the value in what what twitter could become and he genuinely believes it will be worth a lot more but whether it is or not i mean i'm all for this whole verification thing because yeah it's uh you know freedom of speech is is a it's a challenge one isn't it because there's a balance of being able to have freedom of speech but then you've got to understand and where do you draw the line because it's uh and one of the things he spoke about was having a setting yeah. where you could choose like extreme or like tame so that wasn't his words but the whole point is on different it's levels so, so if you go for if you set your account to extreme then you're open to to go to war with the comments that come back and uh, and the abuse that might can't happen. Can't complain about anything that gets exactly. Sent to you. Yeah. But then if you reduce what it is, then you might just see things that are not as extreme. You know, mm-hmm. so I kind of like the idea of that as well because I also think that even with the verification thing, because you're verified as a legitimate user, then of course you get rid of a lot more of the bots. Because he talks about how that that the the cost of a bot is like a is like like a, a penny right and then this whole idea of of it being eight dollars to have a legitimate account you know it's it's just it, it, rather than having like a x amount it's going to cost them significantly more uh-huh. to have to <clears throat> which then it just stops people doing it so it means all these bot accounts are no longer going to go and because uh, the cost of having to have one just it just doesn't it's, make it, it feasible them out the market. Yeah. yeah so so I, I see a lot of it but then you've got to be careful because as you say you know elon's pass coming out you know never knew about that it's crazy uh, <laughs> mad mate there's there's hundreds of different stuff like like I, i'm i'm a fan of elon musk in some ways i think he's hilarious right yeah like he was posted he posted a photo of him in his halloween costume but this and it was like give me my eight dollars which i find so funny i understand it's disingenuous yeah because <clears throat> he's the richest man on the planet so i get that it's not appropriate but i love inappropriate funny stuff like that i think that's hilarious but like he had he had twins with like one of tesla's like secretaries or something like that like, and there's there's different things about his his dad. They they say that his dad was an emerald miner, but I believe that that's wrong. I had a little look into it, and I, <clears throat> I don't think that's correct. Like they said, he was an emerald miner, and basically was using like because they're South African, he was using like South African people as slaves pre-apartheid to like go and mine emeralds and stuff. And I looked at it, and I don't believe that that is accurate. Although I didn't find too much to say what I just yeah. from my glance over it I was like hmm, I don't think that sounds right but it could be um, but I, I think I think he's fucking funny mate do you know what I mean but do you know what the thing is though right which comes with having a platform of that size and really any size of platform you could have 100 followers 200 followers right and I don't know what yours are but I get about between all my social platforms maybe 4 million impressions a week right now impressions is kind of vanity metric to be honest but for example my instagram account i've had one hundred and six thousand accounts reached this week my tiktok like i in the last 24 hours i've went up three thousand nine hundred followers on tiktok just because of one 30 second video outside asda and that's after i got banned on the platform with 70k followers and millions of likes and and high profile people follow me and all that stuff i don't have that anymore and I look at the, some of the comments I get and like the, sh- the shit people say to me and I think about being like Elon Musk now obviously being a multi-billionaire softens the blow for sure, do you know what I mean? And for me, I can still get out of my nice car and I'm like, whatever, I don't care. But if you're some like a typical person with a large platform and you post something semi-controversial, like Elon Musk is probably getting told like, 
he's going to fucking let, get murdered every day or whatever. There's an account on Twitter that he hasn't banned. He was trying to do it as like a proof that he, of free speech that tracks the flight path of his jet. And he's like, oh, but he's, this is but a he's used his, But reach. he's been able to use his team to go in there to change whatever software that that person uses so that his planes can't be tracked. Do you know about that? Nah. Because he, like, tweet, he tweeted about it. He, like, he tweeted about it like two days ago. I'm not even going to block the account that tracks my jet, even though that's a significant security risk for me. Yeah, I think, I think he's dealt with that, though. Like, you think about it. Like, try and even to comprehend the wealth of a billionaire. It's, it, like, it's, it's all right saying, oh, a billionaire. No, that is an insane amount of money. Like, like insane. Yeah. So... I wonder how much cash he has in the bank. <clears throat> well, do, do, do you know, I, I remember, um, you you familiar with Sam Zell? Yes. So Sam Zell, uh, he grew, uh, just before the, the 2008 recession, he grew and had the biggest um, real estate investment trust, REIT, of something like, I think it was at $55 billion he grew it to and, and exited at that. It was like and the largest, like, landlord in the world at that point yeah yeah like like it was just <clears throat> it was just crazy the, the amount of wealth that he had in terms of you know where he invested but anyway so, so I, I remember watching an interview and it was just a throwaway comment they had four billion in the bank and and, and my head was just like trying to even comprehend that like it's just nuts like a throwaway comment it's like liquidity is incredibly important. Having the cash there to be able to move and do things, yeah, four billion. And then let's flip that around to the likes of Peter Jones. I remember him on Dragons Den. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah, I know exactly what you're going to say. So there was a bit of a you know alteration or whatever, a bit of an argument with with one of the the contestants. That you call them, whatever, pitching for money. And he turns around and goes, "Well, how much you got in the bank?" And they went, 10 million. 10 million. I remember. You know? I remember that episode. And, and and my thought process has always been, you know, of course there's money in the back, but it's no good to use some money because, you know, sitting there, it's, yeah. you know. But there's a comparison to now billionaire Peter Jones because of because of investing in property allowed him to get into that. To someone like Sam Zell, 4B, just sitting in the bank. What? How Mate, crazy. Do you know what's so funny about that, right? Is that, that your, your personal endeavours and your business endeavours in that case must hit an economies of scale where you you almost can't spend any more money. Do you get what I mean? Like, you, how you could buy another business or, or whatever, but you get to a point in your life that you physically cannot spend any more money. Like, I don't know what the most expensive car in the world is, but if you think about most expensive production cars, let's look at a Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport, for example. Like, the 100T has, for example, right? Five and a half million dollar car, right? Let's say that is your... That's your, your weekend toy. Like, you could have a hundred of those cars and, like, in comparison to your... But I mean, there's not even a hundred in existence, but in comparison to what you're holding, it's nothing. Like, if you wanted to have a colour and black badge on a Monday, 550 grand, fully specced, right? A Chiron... Like, you could go and buy a Jacob & Co watch every single day. There was, a, there was a stat that said if you were paid, like a thousand dollars per day since the day Jesus was born until now, you would only have something like 0.8% of what Elon Musk is worth or something ridiculous. Like, something just so mental like that. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 and see, see, the funny wow. thing is, is, is like Tesla's goal is to get to 40,000 cars a week, which right now, under the production line as it is, is a car every six seconds. Which obviously is not possible because you need to grow the production line and everything else. But to put things into perspective, that's where he believes Tesla's going to be going. Elon? His name's not Elon. <laughs> Elon Musk. Mate, I've got this feeling he is going to turn into a fucking Batman villain. Like, no joke. Because, like, if you, if you jailbreak your Tesla... He'll ban you for supercharging. So you can't go and use a Tesla supercharger station if you jailbreak your Tesla, right? So as soon as loads more people are dependent on charging networks and the car's consistently being tracked and they're auto-driving 
and he can just mate, he is like fucking Kim Jong Un, mate. I have a feeling, right, that we're gonna get to this point, and I would kind of love it, like because Elon Musk's a bit flabby in that, right? So you know, how Jeff Bezos got fucking jacked. Yeah, he now? is jacked. He is jacked, mate. I want it to be like jacked. I want us to be in like an ill raid shelter, right? <laughs> and me and you are there with like our families. We've lost everything. This is a terrible position to be oh in. Oh my god, where's this story and going? We're shaking, right? And like. <laughs> fucking Elon Musk walks out and it's like the Brooklyn Bridge and it's all broken but he's like standing there and him and Jeff Bezos are just staring at each other right and Elon Musk gives it the whole turns it a fucking Iron Man or something right and he's <laughs> he's looking at him he's like I'm gonna fuck you up and then Jeff Bezos hits like I don't know it's morphing time <laughs> turns it like a fucking Power Ranger mate and like I don't know they come you ever watch Pacific Rim or Transformers yep. Elon Musk is Megatron, mate. He's Megatron with his big axe and Optimus Prime, like Amazon Prime that he's set up. That's why it's called Amazon Prime because he's going to become like Optimus Prime and they're just going to clatter and Jeff Bezos is going to beat the piss out of Elon Musk and he's going to like rule the world. Now he's still... What, what gets on in your head? Fuck knows, I mate. mean, Jesus. Like, but I can see him being like master of the universe. <sighs> it's... um. It's crazy because he's so outspoken. Do you know that way that there's people that are far wealthier than Elon Musk, as you know, right? Because what Aye. we see in the the rich list is what that what you can, and even at that, it's like yeah, it's it's these companies where it's the the Forbes list or whatever who make an estimate of what someone's worth is based on their their holdings, their shareholdings, and what they can see you know, in the you public can knowledge. To be taken off the Forbes list. Yeah, exactly. Times rich list. You know, so Tom Hunter done that. Yeah. He he requested to be taken off the Sunday Times rich list. Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, it's it's kind of anyway. The point I'm making is there's far wealthier people than than the ones that we see at the top. Like there's legitimate trillionaires out there that own like the whole. From an oil supply and Aye. and oh, mate, countries. Don't even talk to me about <laughs> Saudi Arabia, mate. That mad walled city that's six hundred miles long that's gonna cost all this money. Mate, I get told that United the United Arab Emirates in the peak of their oil production, right? And bear in mind oil prices fluctuate in a mad way, right? So the peak of their oil production in terms of barrels, they were doing one point eight billion gross per day just in dubai just in the ue so that's not including saudi it's not including kuwait qatar um brunei and by the way like it's it just it messes with your head when you actually like drill into that and you start to see where the true wealth is and who controls so many things it's nuts it's crazy and the and cabal Oh, um, it, it, it's, it? it's just mad and and this is the funny thing like when we're talking about Elon Elon's putting himself out there like Jeff Bezos doesn't really post that much I mean he, he you know he, little bits on Instagram yeah but but it's, it's it's not as consistent as someone like Elon Musk and look at presidents as an example you know like the only president albeit like social's only been around for what 20 odd years 30 years or something like that I mean not even that much but anyway Donald Trump like, act of almost, how can the guy, like, be the president of the US, do all the stuff he does, it seems like he's, co and, and never seen him with a phone, yet he's constantly posting on social. So there's an argument between the likes of putting yourself out there and putting a target on your back, then just being behind the scenes and just blending in and hiding yeah. away, you know? But the reality is, is that anyone who has got themselves in a position of power anyone who's got themselves in a place where they've got serious wealth or been able to build very quickly, especially over the last couple of decades, is because they've been able to leverage beyond their immediate network. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is when it comes to social, is that people need to embrace it. It's just one of those ones that you can no longer be ignorant to social media. You know, you're getting left behind. Sure, I know plenty of people, I've got friends who um, are behind the scenes, they, they promote and build a business brand. As opposed to a personal. Yeah, which is cool. Like, you, you can still have, if you get a great product, great service, you know, and you want to get behind it, then, of course. 
you, you can still build a business brand, right? But it's so much more expensive in terms of the ad revenue and spend that you need to put behind it because you're you're having to try and get the masses to get behind a brand, to get behind whatever that message that you're trying to, to get out there. But individuals, in a sense, you know, they've got, that's why th this is new, the, the, you know, it's the influencer market just now, you know, this is why you've got those who've got massive followers, not even in the millions, couple hundred thousand are getting all sorts of deals because they know that they've got influence there, they've got a whole bunch of following that will buy into the things that they are mm -hmm. selling. What I don't like about it is influencers who just chase the money. And I get it, like, think about it, it's all one turn around saying, yeah, the reason why they've did that and they're they're, they're, they're promoting this health supplement that we know is a pile of rubbish is because it's for the money. But you don't know what that deal is. Yeah. That could be life-changing for that person. And we could sit here and not agree with it. And I like to think that, because uh, I knock back many opportunities that people come into my network and want to tap into, want to utilise and yep. want to pay all sorts of, you know, um, if money for promoting a service or whatever it may be. But for me, it's like, it, it needs to fit with my brand it needs to fit with is this going to be something that actually it's it just needs to complement yeah it needs to complement and it needs to fit in with am I happy to get my name behind it mm -hmm. and many people don't they'll just sell anything and that's the thing though like regardless of what it is it's like if you can build up a following people will buy mm -hmm. it's crazy that's how you've got like, the likes of The Rock you know like his tequila drink is valued at something like 4 billion that's mad isn't it you know like George Clooney you know he he single-handedly, you could say, changed the whole coffee business with, oh God, this went right out of my head. Um, He's a coffee business? No, he became the face of, what's the coffee machine we've got through there, right out of my head? Nescafe. Nescafe. Nescafe, oh my God, the biggest, yeah. He So he changed them all, and then, then Nescafe started getting into the likes of John Lewis and mm -hmm. all these other places, and that. then it just exploded because they got George Clooney. And it was, it, it's just, it's crazy how people can endorse certain things and it can, it can change a brand, and brands will pay like hundreds of thousands, if not millions. And you're only getting that if you've got a following. That's why, you know, people buy into certain people's messages, you know? It's funny, like, when you see, like, people, I think the term is, they call them greasers, greasers, like, people who are constantly promoting different shit. Like, see, when the crypto boom was, like, at its worst, I would say, like, see, like, Floyd Mayweather, Jake Paul, Kim Kardashian, like, Kim Kardashian just got sued for it. Like, they would promote any, like, Jake Paul promoted a different, NFT project every day. I know I told you about this one yesterday, but what about this one? Do you know what I mean? And it, it gets to a point where I have to question the intelligence of the people that follow them. Does that make sense? Like, I have to actually look and go, right, the other seven were shite, but you think the eighth one is, is going to be good? Like, it makes no sense. And some, I guess everyone has their own moral compass, don't they? So what is fine to one person is not find another. You look at guys like Steve Will Do It and, and these different guys that were doing like, you know, the crypto gambling websites, stake.com, Rubet, all those. So that Steve Will Do It was like making, I can't remember what it was, fucking six million a month or something off Rubet. Basically just streaming on Twitch, gambling. But he was gambling with like fake money from Rubet and getting people to join under his link. And you, you don't gamble with money, you put up XRP, Bitcoin, like that's what you gamble with. And they asked KSI to do it. And they said to KSI, because his platform at the time, he says, we'll give you a sign on for your 10 million. And then a rolling revenue share thereafter. And he was like, nah, I'm not doing it. Respect. It's mad, mate. The gambling ones, are, Twitch haven't like get banned gambling streamers just now because it got like so bad. Like really, really bad. Because people were just, they were just getting these, any big influencers who would drink on stream, gamble on stream, like do whatever on the stream. And they just went, nah, this yeah. is fucked up. Yeah. This is another thing as well. It's like um, buying branded gear, you know? Like, for me, like, I, I know you've got a lot of branded gear, yeah. right? Well, just now, just for clarity, I'm wearing Georgia as the socks. <laughs> I'm wearing Air Max 95s. Non-cuffed pre-mark joggies. I bought them by accident. Bootlegs, bro. <laughs> and a Yes t-shirt. So representing the merch yes exactly so today i'm not well this is the only brand and nike that i've got on today and i've got georgia as the boxers on <laughs> like there's there's nothing wrong with having branded stuff like there isn't but it's mad that you're just a walking billboard and that bothers me 
it kind of bothers me. It's like, if you think about it, if you've got like a Gucci jumper, it's like Gucci or whatever kind of brand. And it's just like, you're a walking like billboard for that company. Yeah. And it's like, what, what's so cool about that? Like, what, what's so cool? about having, walking about with this status of, I've got a Gucci jumper or something like that. To me, they look so awful. Like, instantly, my mind's like, I can't, I can't comprehend it. Mm. I like I like subtle things. Now, where am I going with this? It's like, when you get to a certain point, you can pick and choose brands. And that's why you've got, like, footballers that only wear, you know, Nike or Adidas or whatever it is that they are sponsored uh, by. Yeah, 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 because yeah. that's what they need to do. You know, it's. I remember um, one of the. I'm not mentioning the person, but he was doing a, a seminar at one of our jiu jitsu um, uh, schools, and he he's sponsored by Tatami. Yeah. But he wasn't wearing Tatami shorts, and he's like, "Oh, if we get a picture, I need to kind of kneel down," because again, sponsors don't like that stuff. Like, I'm sponsoring you. I'm paying this to you. I don't want you to be wearing other people's brands and stuff. So in a way, you're kind of owned. So if you're going to get owned. Wouldn't it make sense to get paid to be owned Aye. rather than walking about with someone else's brand? Like, it's kind of one of the crazy things. Yeah, you I'm know? actually going to message Gucci on Instagram after this and say, guys, <laughs> send me money and clothes or I'm not wearing that shit anymore. Do you know what it is for me? I'll be honest, right? Like, what you've just said is bang on because see, like, some of the brands I wear, like, say, Margiela, for example, right? I don't really know many people in Glasgow that wear Margiela, there's only one shop that sells in the whole of Glasgow, 18 Montrose, on 18 Montrose Street, and they sell some of the stuff in there, and the only reason I started wearing Margiela is because of hearing it in songs, that was that I heard in songs, and I would see people that I followed that I thought were cool, guys like fucking Lil Baby and all that, like rappers, and I'd be like, oh that's cool, and then I seen Lil Baby with a Goyard bag, and I was like, I need a Goyard bag, like, it's, I would love to be able to break down from the start of like designer clothes and designer items to now to understand that greater marketing plan or if it happened by accident or how they done it because it must just be association like people see people wearing shit and they go and they they wear it but there, there must be more to it than that yeah it's a it's a whole industry in itself that um movie house of gucci that I've not was, watched it, but Jess watched it when we were on the plane back from yeah. Turkey the other week, and and she said. Tell you what, was, I'm looking forward to the 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 movie on Lamborghini. I didn't even know there was one coming out. Yeah, you know they started making tractors. Well, that's the whole point of the the oh. movie. The movie's talking about um, well, I forget his first name, but Mr. Lamber Lamborghini. You know how he started. David Lamborghini. <laughs> David Lamborghini. David Lamborghini. <laughs> do, you, do you know what Peugeot started making? No. Bikes. And salt shakers. Really? Yes. It's crazy. My auntie has Peugeot salt shakers in her house. Wow. Well, there you go. Like, I love all these stories. Like That's one of the things that I love that, uh, and I'm the first one to watch, founder about McDonald's, right? Ray Kroc, right. man. You know, any of those type of things where they do documentaries. Now, some of the documentaries are really good, but I actually like the ones that, that, that people have been in and actually did, like, an in-depth kind of documentary on YouTube about like doesn't we'll never make it oh, on TV mate, or anything I but there's love some really good stuff like that that's mate. my go to like like so, so, so much better than TV because there's no bias it's so impartial like it's a much more free platform you don't need to go and provide your pitch deck to the producers and how many amazing things that could have made it to TV have just not made it through the yeah. The, the filtering process, you know, like some of the, like the investigative journalists on YouTube and like I watch loads of different MMA documentaries on YouTube that are just made by like like just fans and stuff like that. And it is, it is so, so good, mate. Yeah, one of the other stories I loved as well is the whole Coco Chanel and how she started off and how right. she, like she was just wild like at the time, like uh, women would not wear a bikini. Like, if you looked at her time when she was coming into this whole fashion side of things, like, women just did not wear bikinis. Mm -hmm. It was, they were fully clothed as they were going into the beach and the water and all that stuff. And she started walking about with a bikini. It started blowing people's mind and, you know, and then it started catching on. She'd wear these big flamboyant hats and she would then take clothes and cut them up. It would just be about being controversial and look completely different. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and before she got any clothes, actually, it started off with a perfume, you know, and 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 people would want to come and and, and get that perfume. And she just created a movement, 
and it was just nuts and how it just kept on growing but it's it's like I love all those stories I love origin stories of course you know and, and how they get started and how they overcame so many challenges and that's why for me it's great reading books and audio books listening to them and stuff but the ones that I love the most is uh, biographies like that's what just Richard hooks me good. Oh yeah, losing my virginity. Or fi- they're all like it's losing my virginity or finding my virginity. There's like yeah. loads of different ones. Screw it, Richard let's Branson. do it. Was a really good one as well. Like I am so hooked on just origin stories where they started, rags to riches or whatever it may be. Peter Jones you know? has a great one. Mark Cuban has a great one. Um, do, you, do you watch Shark Tank? You watch Shark no, Tank? No, I'm obviously I'm aware of it. I've seen a couple of episodes, Cochran, but I just her one's yeah. Great. But like, see if you're on Shark Tank. Like, you only want Mark Cuban, don't you? Like, Mark Cuban is the coolest billionaire on the planet. If Mark Cuban wasn't there, I think Shark Tank wouldn't... Be, I mean, I'm sure they'd find someone else, but he does make it. Oh, he makes it. Yeah. No, I see Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. He's yeah. a wide bastard. He's good, mate. I like him. Yeah. But, like, I honestly think Mark Cuban is the coolest billionaire ever. You know, he reposted me on Instagram once. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe two years ago. Yeah, he reposted wow. me on Instagram. Um... It, it was weird because it was a thing about um, a guy came on who was a drinks entrepreneur or, or like had something to do with the alcohol industry and he, he went and tried to research everyone's favourite drink. So he brought Mr. Wonderful red wine because he owns like vineyards and all that shit. So he brought him like a red wine and this and that and this and that. And then he gets to Mark Cuban and hands him what we would call in Scotland a bottle of Mad Dog. Right, and Mark Cuban grabs a bottle and goes, "Mad Dog 2020," <laughs> like opens it, and starts drinking it right no on Shark Tank, and I took like a video to do with it and like post it on Instagram, and he reshared it. Um, but mate, he's just like he's so cool, mate. Like owning the Mavs and like he, he bought this fucking house, and he said he never went upstairs in the house for like the first three years because it was so big and all that. He's just an absolute nutter. You ever seen the video of him getting fined for swearing courtside? Uh, somehow I feel like I have. So he's at like, he takes so much involvement in the Mavs, right? He's like courtside as often as he can be. He'll be screaming at players and all that, even though he's not like management, but he's the owner. Like he's so involved, that he's so passionate about it. And he goes to um, all the like post-match conferences and sits down as the owner and will answer questions alongside the management and all that stuff. And... Um, at the court side, he'd got caught in the mic going like, oh, fuck this or something like that. And this report went up and said, oh, we've had like a report from the NBA that you've actually been fined $50,000 for swearing court side. And Mark Cuban goes, what? He says, yeah, you've been fined $50,000. He says, for swearing at the side. He goes, that's crazy. Fuck it. <laughs> they fined him another 50 grand, <laughs> mate. And he paid 100, he paid them all, he had to pay them 100 grand. But um, he was uh, just like, ah, fuck it. Like, I love that about Mark Cuban, mate. Like, he's put that into perspective. Hilarious. That's like a penny. Yeah. He's worth, he's worth about four and a half. Him and Donald Trump have about the same net worth. Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? It's mad, mate. I mean, so I think that this whole conversation was all supposed to be about social and the benefits of it and we've been telling stories and talking about all sorts of stuff which is cool it's good it's like entrepreneurship isn't it it's it's learning from these people it's allowing these people to see their journey and the challenges they have gone through because there's no illusions when it comes to entrepreneurship that you've got to go through you know the good bad and the ugly you know it's like rather than labeling days good or bad it's just is what it is Mm -hmm. all the people we've just spoke about we wouldn't know if it wasn't for social media Absolutely. Like, and, and media in general. Like, I first seen Mark... Do you know what? The first time I heard Mark Cuban's name, I believe, was in a Lil Wayne song. Like, years ago, off the Carter Three, the album, I believe, right? And I didn't know who Mark Cuban was, but the name always stuck with me. I was like, I wonder who Mark Cuban is. And then I seen him on Shark Tank, and then started watching his stuff on YouTube. He does stuff with Bloomberg on YouTube, and following him on Instagram. Like, without social media, me and you wouldn't know each other. Yeah. The people watching this just now would have nowhere to watch it. Like, if you are neglecting social media, you are a donkey. Yeah, it's just such an opportunity to be able to expand your reach Mm -hmm. and be able to, uh, I mean, target your audience that you want to to do business with as well, you know? So whether you're doing it as a, a, a business brand 
or a personal brand, you've you've got to embrace it. You know, this is one of the things that, um, you know, your superpower when it comes to entrepreneurship is your ability to market. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those skill sets that you've really got to to start to embrace and learn and understand it, and then and just communicating and getting your message out there. Because if you've got a product or service, you, you need to get it beyond your immediate network. You've got to get it out there to the masses. People get so obsessed with the quality of content from the start, right? And I always try and get it through to people. The quality of your content does not matter if nobody's watching. Exactly. You could be posting the best content, the best value. If nobody's watching it, it doesn't matter. Like, it is never... Do you think McDonald's produced the best burger in the world? Well, absolutely not. <laughs> but would you say they're the best known burger franchise in yep. the world? And by that logic, they also have the lead in the market. They're probably the most successful, the most profitable, right? So it's never the best. It's not, it's not always going to be the best product that wins. Quite often, it's going to be the best known. Yeah, I hear it all the time. I hear people say, I've got a better product or a better service than such and such, who we all know. And then you go, well, great. So how's it doing? Well, it's not. It's like it's when I wake up in the morning knowing that Yes Academy is better than Hustlers University and I just can't do anything about it. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> you know. But that's the thing. It's like, uh, it's so let, let's look at that as, a, as an example. So with the, you know, the Yes Academy, our goal with that is to, you know, put out strong content, like content that people can go through on a monthly basis that mm. goes into depth with entrepreneurship with running a business, with marketing, sales, as well as other ways of being able to invest and make money. Develop and yourself as a person Exactly, as well. because it's all about having the right mindset. It's all about who do you need to become in order to be able to progress into the next version of yourself and getting around that kind of community. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we have invested a lot of time and energy to put together um, great products, which could easily sell for thousands in themselves mm. to put it all part of the whole Yes Academy. And we know that it's far superior than anything else that's out there. Mm-hmm. And now we just need to spread that message. And then once it gets out there and people start to see the content, what it can do for them. And this is a great thing about it because, you know, properties, which is most people know me for being involved in, yeah. can you make a lot of money in property relatively in a relatively short period of time? Well, absolutely. You've proven that, you've done that. But it does take a little bit of time to get the business up and running, get moving, try to find the deals and, you know, depending on what strategy you're focusing on, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. But why not supplement that with learning things about marketing, sales, building a business, understanding money, because that foundational stuff coupled by a property business or any other business, as a matter of fact, yeah. is going to get you results so much quicker. And it's, this is one of the one thing I always talk about people who come to learn about property. It's like, well, it's not just property. Let's learn about marketing. Let's learn about personal branding, how to put yourself out there on social. If you've got a million quid in the bank, but you've got no way to market to whatever it is you're trying to buy, if it's property you're trying to buy, if you've got a million pound in the bank, 10 million, like it doesn't matter. That money is null and void unless you can find something that transactionally on the face of it is worth putting that money into. So if you don't understand marketing, or, I mean, if you had 10 million quid, you'd probably have the budget to pay someone to understand your marketing. But at the start, I mean, I don't know anyone who's who I'm friends with who's went, I'm going to start properly with my 10 million. Do you get what I mean? Like, it's not really a thing that I've seen. It's probably happened, but you need to have an understanding of all these different facets. And it's key, listening to what I'm saying there as well, it's an understanding. Am I saying that you should, if you are investing in property, investing in crypto, stocks and shares, ETFs, whatever it is you do, I'm, I'm saying you need to understand marketing. I'm not saying you need to go and become a marketer and become a salesman and become this and that. Yeah, at the fucking start of your business journey, you're Mr. Muscle. You're loving the jobs they hate. You're doing everything. You're at, like A boy said this like at the Scottish property meet, came up to me and went, oh, Richard, like, I'm, I'm practicing in the morning. I'm, I'm practicing gratitude and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I was like, mate, like, oh, what do you what do you do at night time? So I'll go to my work and at night time I go to the gym and I says, Right, so you're actually not doing any work. So as you wake up in the morning and you say, I am thankful for my cozy bed, blah 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 then you go to work and you come home. He says you're not actually doing anything. He says you you should be out walking the fucking streets, chapping doors, I don't give a fuck what it is you're doing. Do something that's revenue generating. And like like people think they need to be masters of all these different things. It's not. You master the industry that you work in, you understand and oversee the other aspects. 
if you don't have an understanding of marketing, you don't know how to put yourself out there, like you're never gonna land any type of worthy investment. It's just not gonna happen. I can't see it. Or if you have the worthy investment and you don't have the capital, you, you're never gonna, it doesn't matter if it's the next best crypto, the highest return in property, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you think about it, and we'll probably finish up at this one here, is that if you look at Dragon's Den, mm. when people go on, or Shark Tank, they might have the best product and service, but there's been many occasions where the dragons or the sharks don't invest because of the individual. Mm -hmm. Do you know that way? So you could have, and I've seen it in the flip side, where the product or service that they're offering isn't that great, but they're buying into the person. Yeah. And they're like, we know what you've got isn't so great, but we know that you're capable of working to make it what it could be and we can come in and assist and help or X, Y, and Z and they're investing in the person as well. Yep. You know, so that's another thing. It's like, it goes back to the product or service. As much as having a good product or service is great, it's going to help, but it's working on you. Like, like if you can work on you so that you become a viable prospect for people to want to invest in, work with and do, then, then that's it. You know, you, you, you'll be surprised at how many more opportunities will come your way for people to want to work with, get behind you, you know, back and support you mm -hmm. if you're that type of person. Mm -hmm. And that's with anything in life. And it's really having just the understanding and the overview of the fundamentals of business, not having to know it all inside out yep. and being able to just move forward, you know? Yeah, like that's the thing. You've seen so many amazing products go onto those different shows. Tangle teaser for one like pretty much the hairbrush that every woman uses. The guy went on Dragon's Den and they hated him. They thought he was shouting and speaking too loud, but they didn't see his hearing aids. He was deaf. Wow. And they thought he was he was speaking too loud and being aggressive when he wasn't. It was just, like my mum's got hearing aids, for example, so I kind of get it a bit more. Um, and then, you know, Shark Tank, they missed out on Ring doorbells. Wow. Missed out on Ring doorbells. The guy then sold part of Ring for a billion and they went and done a guest shark season so they brought Peter Jones on as a guest shark. They brought Richard Branson on as a guest shark. And then one person that was unnamed opened the doors. The guy who ring doorbell walks in and sits down. They're all like, fuck. My God. Ring doorbells, How mate. amazing is that? He sat down. He's a guest shark. I love stories Unreal, like that. Honestly, Unreal. Love it. So good. So good. Brilliant. So um, as we bring this episode to a close, let's just a little recap of the Yes Academy for those who yes. are interested in getting that information and knowledge that's going to help them in business. Yep. So the Yes Academy is an online entrepreneurship and development platform. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and you're considering doing property, you're considering doing crypto, you're a construction business, you're a hairdresser, you or an aesthetics practitioner, I don't care what it is you do, the Yes Academy is going to be able to give you tools, resources, a community, a network, and mentors like me and Paul to help take your business from where it is today into new heights. Um, the thing about the Yes Academy that's great is that it's not open 24 hours a day. And um, what I mean by that is the product is accessible, but we just don't keep it open all the time, let people join and, and just come and go as they please. We'll try to build a pretty solid community of people going forward, driven on a, a singular mission, and that is finding success financially, personally, and otherwise. So if you are interested in registering your interest for the Yes Academy, what I want you to do is go down into the bio, you'll be able to click the link there, and you'll be able to fill in your details. As soon as we are looking to launch our next intake, we'll be able to notify you by email and if you're not fast you'll last these intakes are capped normally do 100 150 people each time because we like to keep this service as strong as possible and give the people exactly what they need to get to that next level so register your interest and if you get a slot make sure you come in and join us in the yes academy boom <laughs>